Okay, so we are resuming the presentation after a small technical issue with the camera. Uh, so I was uh, saying about something about the GVM support. Um, we could work on a red compiler on a, for GVM, uh, make a GVM backend, but uh, currently we would like to experiment with a different approach, with, which uh, will be uh, bridging with a uh, virtual machine instead of running on virtual machine. So Red will st compile, still compile to native code, but uh, will interface with the GVM to be able to exchange data and call GVM call and from the GVM call Red call directly using a GNI uh, interface. So we'll see how far we can get with that. If we can't do it fully, we will uh, then think about the fallback option of uh, compiling it to Java code, but we'll try to avoid that as much as possible. Another obvious uh, virtual machine target is uh, the .NET platform from Microsoft. So it's getting, uh, it's getting uh, more spread with uh, the new Windows phones. So we'll see if they get popular enough. We, we will probably work also on uh, bridging with uh, the .NET system and uh, like the GVM, fall back on compiling to uh, the CLR, CLR uh, machine if uh, the bridging is not good enough. Uh, another option which is less and less interesting uh, every, every year is the Flash platform and its virtual machine because Flash is uh, losing ground uh, quite rapidly so we'll see if it's still relevant once we've done the other ones we'll see if uh, it's relevant to um, support that uh, virtual machine and of course another one which is uh, dominant now is the JavaScript uh, language which uh, could be a very useful uh, target for red for running red code directly in browsers for example so is a sum up of uh, goals of uh, red project and red language so we want it to be simple as possible so we should be able to write red code with a very simple uh, code editor we don't need uh, very sophisticated IDE for writing it like some other languages. Still, an, a good IDE with debugging capabilities should, will be a good addition, but it shouldn't be required and necessary to write any red code. So we also want compactness, which is kind of uh, very world in our world well, where every SDK can a easily go, go over one gigabyte uh, but uh, we still think uh, compactness has a great value and I think that the mo mobile market is showing that compactness is really useful. Also we want it to be highly expressive so we want it to be able to express uh, a lot of code with minimal minimal number of lines of code. We want it to be fast enough because if it's too slow uh, we won't be able to use it for any kind of application and if we have to use another programming language uh, because red is not fast enough that means we we've missed something in the project somewhere. Uh, we want to be green, so we want to, the language, uh, language and the final binaries to be as small as possible. So we want it to be also everywhere, we want to plug it everywhere. So we will distribute also Red as a shared library with a simple uh, public uh, API to be able to plug it in any kind of third party tools. And uh, of course, we want it to be portable on all uh, platforms that uh, mean that are used and on all the mainstream platform. And uh, people from any 
let's use platform are also welcome to help bots read on their favorite platform. We want it to be flexible, so we want Red to be like a swift knife of programming. So we want it to be good, not always the best one, but good enough for any programming task, which is not the case for Rebel because mainly of the <coughs> because mainly of the slowness slowness of the language. So in the case of Red, we should be able to tackle any task, any programming task with it. Okay, is a very high view of the roadmap of Red. So we are currently at version 0.3.1 and we are heading to version 0 0.4. Uh, so version 0 0.4 will be completed once we add Unicode support to the console and interpreter. Uh, we need to add a function uh, creation which is not currently available in the interpreter. Uh, we lack a lot of uh, useful data types, so we'll need to add them to have a complete uh, red version. Uh, we still lack also the object data type and the uh, port that uh, derives from uh, object. Um, so that's uh, a mandatory feature to have to complete the red runtime. Uh, we miss also the I.O. subsystem currently, so there's not really <coughs> there's not really yet I.O. support for Red, except using some of the bindings uh, provided by Kai that he recently ported to Red, that enables at least to have a reading and writing to file system. We also need to add the concurrency support and uh, since a few days there's also a networking oh you had uh, networking that yeah. was a surprise curl ah through curl okay that would be good uh, so we also need to have a more native and action to complete it and once we've done that we will have a quasi future complete red implementation and we will bump the version to 0.4 after that, we'll start a new <coughs> phase of the project. So version 0.4 will be a big milestone, probably the biggest milestone of the project since the beginning. Uh, and after that, we will work on self-hosting Red uh, within, within itself. So we will get rid of uh, Reball compiler that we, uh, Reball that we use currently to build uh, the compilers and we will rebuild Red and Red System compiler directly in Red. That will be a very interesting uh, phase of the project because we'll be able to fix and improve a lot uh, of the current implementation of those compilers and uh, we'll be able also to get it much more faster than the current version that's run on, uh, that runs on uh, Rebel. So we have a lot of benefits from it and uh, the one, probably one of the biggest also benefits is that we'll be able to validate Red as a, as a programming language able to make real world application and the best way to show it is to build a compiler, at least, in fact not one but two compilers directly using Red. So once we have that, I think we'll have a really, really good uh, programming tool uh, that will be uh, working fully and at full speed. So here are a few project metrics. That's the same slide like, like last year, but I've just updated the values. So we have now about seven committers. We have uh, passed uh, 1,600 uh, public commits, so this is starting to get quite serious. It's not a small project anymore, it's quite, uh, it's quite big. Uh, we have uh, almost uh, 400 tickets, and most of them, which is about more than 95% are closed. So we try to 
keep the number of uh, tickets, uh, open tickets, uh, quite low because we think that uh, fixing bugs uh, uh, is uh, often more important that, uh, than adding uh, new features. Uh, the unit test framework is helping a lot uh, with, uh, for that, for debugging the, the system and, and avoiding regression. So we, are, we have uh, reached about 15,000 unit tests currently with about 90% of them uh, are, which are generated by scripts. Most of it, both of the tests and the scripts and the testing framework has been built by Peter Wood, uh, which, uh, who does a great job uh, for that. I thank him. So Red System uh, currently hasn't uh, changed a lot since last year, so it's still about 300 kilobytes of uh, sources with about set, uh, 7 uh, thousand uh, line of code for the compiler and 2 thousand two uh, line of code for the linker which is really really small um, if I recall if I uh, recall correctly uh, the Lua language uh, claims to have the smallest interpreter uh, in the world and it, it takes them something like or IO. I, I think IO. IO, I think IO says the interpreter is 10,000 lines. So the IO interpreter should be about 10,000 lines of code, and it's an interpreter. And we are doing a compiler and a linker in about the same number of lines of code. Uh, for the record, the current red interpreter is less than 300 uh, lines of code. So the current Redlico compiler is about 2,000 uh, and a half lines of code, so it makes it uh, much smaller than a uh, Red System compiler. And the uh, Red compiler is really a thin layer, that's uh, what we wanted, that exactly what we wanted, a thin layer that just translates the Red code to Red System code using the runtime library. In fact, the whole Red power lies in the runtime library, which is currently about 12,000 uh, lines of code. <coughs> that's where the real power comes from. And that runtime library once compiled is about 100 kilobytes uh, of native code. So it's still quite small and we will keep it small. So in the end, the red uh, executable with uh, the static compiler, the JIT compiler, the interpreter and the runtime library should be still below one megabyte of uh, compiled code. And these are the oh, classic links to um, the Red uh, blog, uh, Twitter channel and uh, RC uh, channel where we, you can meet us and uh, come uh, freely and ask any question about the Red project. You, you'll always get some uh, answer from someone. Thank you very much.